Hey guys, I'm John, and in this video we're going to find out how ace I think this is. Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and this time I'm going to give you my review of the new Mortal Kombat Legends film, Battle of the Realms. Now, this is a direct continuation from the last Mortal Kombat Legends film, Scorpion's Revenge, which is an excellent film if you do get the chance to uh, watch this one this is excellent and this now the new one battle of the realms is just a continuation of the story that was established in the previous film now in the previous film we sort of had the mortal kombat that was the one that settled everything and it followed very similar beats to all the other sort of mortal kombat stories that have been on screen before um Specifically, the 95 original live action film where we get the likes of Liu Kang, Johnny Cage, and Sonya Blade, accompanied by Ra Raiden as their champion leader, and they go into battle and they win Mortal Kombat, as they always do. Um, but the thing with Scorpion's Re Revenge is it, it, it established Scorpion as a more sort of rounded character, it sort of built up his his history a little bit and, and bodied that out a lot and the thing about i liked about the last one is just how violent it was it really took sort of the ultra violence from the games which are just just brutal man it's just brutal they're just, they're just ace and that, that's what makes you play mortal kombat because they're just so visceral uh, and the, the film did such an amazing job of doing it and, and it hadn't been seen sort of to that extent before um the, the last live action film did add a lot of brutality into it but the animation in that was just sort of next level. It, it did compete with what was in the games um, for the sort of extreme violence it was, which is what I loved about it. So when I saw that they were doing a sequel, I was like, I love the first one. Let's get the second one. So here we go. So the second one follows on directly and Shao Kahn's not happy because, you know, he lost. So he's thrown a hissy fit because, you know, he's a big girl. And he, he wants another Mortal Kombat, so he, he agrees that they'll do another tournament, one last tournament that'll settle everything. And he, he's obviously overly confident because he's partaken in it. And it, it then follows like them going to Outworld, which is where basically the whole film pretty much takes place. Now, one thing I will say about this is it does go bigger and better in the sense of including the roster of characters that are in the Mortal Kombat universe, which is really nice to see, to be fair. Because, like, in the first one, you see, like, the small select, you know, the very popular ones. Where in this one, they really bring in a lot of other characters. And it was really good to sort of see them on screen for the first time and, and see the fights and all that, which was really cool. Um, but, like, this one really goes and tries to be something more than, I suppose... It should be being a Mortal Kombat thing because Mortal Kombat is just about kicking the crap out of each other in cool ways and in cool locations. And that's all you want, you know what I mean? That the, the underlying story is there about, you know, evil trying to conquer over and you just want to see the good guys triumph and just basically just beat the crap out of everybody along the way. That's all I want. That's all anybody wants when they're watching Mortal Kombat or they play Mortal Kombat. That's it. But this really tries to build a more complex story and, and something that you're really supposed to care about. And I really didn't. The story in this just wasn't very well executed at all. And it, it just fell flat for me. So it follows obviously Shao Kahn trying to regain his status and take over everything. But then it goes to the underworld and you see Shinnok come back and Shinnok's there and he's trying to, piece together these ancient things to bring back the ancient one and that's sort of going on in, in the, these two timelines are running parallel and then you know Liu Kang's the chosen one is Liu Kang's always the chosen one because Liu Kang's ace man and and then he sort of falls on obviously Liu Kang ends up winning Mortal Kombat obviously because he always does but then like Shinnok comes and he he assembles what he's doing with his little team of people which was really cool, because um, you see like other characters with him as well as sort of in more combat, well in the tournament, and then it ends up where Shinnok gets all these god powers and becomes like a god-ish being, 
And then the other Celestials imbue Luke Kang with their power. And it turns into a big dragon. We have this big kaiju battle at the end. And I was like, what am I watching? What the hell's going on here? And it was just... Mortal Kombat's crazy anyway. And it's really far-fetched. Because people are kicking the crap out of each other. And you see people breaking bones. And then they just stand up and carry on. Which is obviously... Nobody can do that in real life. But it's great to see. You know what I mean? It is. But then this going into kaiju battle. I was like... Really, guys? Are you really drawing this out? And, and like the character developments in it just didn't feel fleshed out enough, and and nothing was really explored properly. It, it was just, it felt like they tried to cram in too much to sort of finalise it a little bit. Whereas they could have made a bit more of a franchise because although this one ends, it really just sort of symbolise a fi- like a finality of it. That that's it. Okay, we've done two films. Hey. And no. You know what I mean? These animated films are excellent and they could have carried them on in such an awesome way and explored more and brought more characters in and saw more tournaments and different locales and things like that where they didn't, they just sort of end it there and that was one of the other sort of downsides with this one so all the Mortal Kombat tournament takes place in Outworld in Shao Kahn's kingdom. Fair enough. But all the fights take place in this like Colosseum, Shao Kahn's Colosseum and I was a bit... No, that's the good thing with Mortal Kombat. I mean, I, I love playing the game and just randomizing your locations, and you never know where you're going to end up. And all the backdrops are always excellent, and and it's always interesting to see what's going on. And and that's what I wanted. And like in the previous film, they did that. All the fights, like you, you'd see the people moving around and fighting in different places, and it was cool because like you know they'd use different things in the environment. And and this one they just didn't. And just let me down a little bit, because um, I wanted to see a bit of variety, and the animation's slick, and smooth, and it's rapid, and if you just want something to see some cool fight scenes, then yeah, do you know what, give it a go, um, but for something that goes on the level of this, like because this is just excellent, man, there's a motorbike just gone past, um, Scorpion's Revenge is amazing, and Battle of the Realms just really let me down. I was really disappointed by it. Now, if you just want to continue and you're a completionist like me and it has to be in your collection, then by all means give it a go. There are some things in there to enjoy, but overall, I was very disappointed with it. The voice cast all returns from the previous film, which was cool, and you know they all do a really good job of sort of embodying the characters. Everybody is really good in the voice acting roles. I can't really fault the voice acting. It, like I say, it was good to see a bigger roster of characters in there. But overall, yeah, it just fell flat for me. And I wouldn't recommend it unless you're a diehard Mortal Kombat fan, which I love Mortal Kombat, so I'll, I'll sort of watch most things related to Mortal Kombat. So that is the only reason I'd sort of say to watch it. If you're just watching it because you enjoyed the previous film, um, then I wouldn't bother. It just isn't worth it. It just doesn't compare in quality to what came before. And how the last film explores Scorpion's background and sort of saw him grow as a character and, and all that. In this one, he just feels like pushed aside a little bit. Scorpion really doesn't get a time to shine as such in this one. Whereas in the previous one, he did. Like, the opening scene before he's Scorpion, when he's just Hanzo, and he just kills loads of dudes in his village, was amazing. And it was an absolutely incredible way to open a movie, to just showcase what was going to be. And in this one, it just never quite gets that way. I mean, it starts off with a big war. It's like a bit like a cheap version of an animated Lord of the Rings battle at the beginning. And it was just like, what am I watching what am I watching? Do I want to watch like full scale battles or do I just want to see two people in a round kicking the crap out of each other? Well, that's what I want. I don't want to watch armies because that's not what Mortal Kombat's about and that's what they tried to do. They tried to make more of a larger franchise um, with this one and then get to the end and just end it. And it was like, hold on a minute. So the beginning seems as if they're building something and then it's as if like the creators got bored halfway through and go, oh, what guys? Screw this. And then just ended it. So, yeah. So, no, guys. Mortal Kombat, Legends, Battle of the Realms. No, man. Doesn't even tip on the Aceometer at all. Don't don't recommend it. 
unless you're a diehard Mortal Kombat fan. But one thing I will note of excellence with this film, which is probably the best bit, is the beginning. The very, 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 very beginning. When the film when the film first starts and the Warner Brothers logo appears and you see the little door open because Warner Brothers always do these little things where they include characters and like um in the first one, I think it was Daffy Duck appears and like Scorpion just pops out of the Warner Brothers thing, just like get over here and pulls like Daffy back in. Um whereas in this one you see Scorpion pop out and uh, Shaggy appears out to Scooby Doo, which is awesome because I love Scooby Doo, and like he appears, but he's ultra instinct, man. He's all like glowing, like green and crazy, and it's like that's awesome. And he's like, like get over here, man, and like grabs Scorpion and pulls him in. And I was like, oh my god, that's awesome. I mean, and and that's what I want now. I want to see Shaggy kick the crap out of Scorpion because it'd be like, it'd be awesome, man. That'd be ace. But for me, that was probably the best part of the film. But yeah. There we go, guys. Uh, let me know if you've seen any of them. If you've seen the previous one or this new one and what you thought of them because I'd love to know what you guys think of it as well. Um, so just let me know down below in the comments. If you did enjoy this video, click that like button. Subscribe to the channel for more Ace content. Really helps me out if you click that like button, guys. Just give it a click, click. It doesn't take long. Follow me on Instagram for updates to the channel. And with that, guys, I'll catch you later.